Welcome to another episode of the GSAT Track How To Series. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over some of the pieces within GSAT Track Live View so you can understand some of the items that you're looking at and understand the difference between historical view and live view. To begin, we need to go to the user interface and click on Live View. Next, we'll have a series of all of the groups that we're currently able to view and also all of the assets that are currently being tracked on the portal. We can view those by expanding all assets. We have the ability to filter through these assets either by name, ESN, IMEI, or MISDIN. To give an example of this, I'll type in spot, and here I can see all the spot devices that are currently available on the system. Now, the next piece of the live view is that we currently see the status of any device that is reported within the system. It's important to note that this information is the last known position reported by the device itself. It is not its current position right now, this very second. It is the information that's been provided from the device itself in its timed interval. So, in the live view, we can see things like different icons to indicate what is going on with this device, including stationary, idling, that it's operating on backup power. We can see places that it's interacting with. We can also see that through these five boxes, additional information. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Jeff's phone here. And you'll notice there's a lot going on. The one thing that you'll notice though, is that by clicking on positions, we're brought to the positions that have been reported by the device. These are the most recent positions. Latitude, longitude, speed, all of that information is available for you here. If there were any alerts triggered by this device, they would also be accessible. Any events, statuses, and messages. We can see that there are some additional alerts that have been triggered by a device, Brian's cell phone, which he's been testing. We can also acknowledge those through the live view at this time. Now, in the live view, we also have the ability to interact with the device by clicking on the cog. This will bring up a series of items that we're able to interact with and utilize to uh, understand feature sets and behaviors of the device, do things like routing, understand waypoints. I'll get into all those feature sets at a later time, but right now I just wanna show you the different pieces of the live view. As you saw, when I clicked on the actual device, we had all kinds of information that came in from its last known location. This include a timestamp, address, latitude and longitude, speed, altitude, the accuracy of the device, and also the geofence it might be interacting with, and any additional IO or sensor information. Now it's important to note regarding the accuracy of a device, it is held by the device's own threshold. Uh, so that means that this device is actually going to report its position within a 25 meter accuracy. That's the device, that's not the portal itself. The device uh, sends out its signal, the report is received by the portal, and the report uh, is then displayed visually on the portal itself. So that information is held by the device itself. So as you see with this CanLamp device, the accuracy a little bit further out. So it all depends on the device that you're using. The other thing that is dependent on this device and the information that you're viewing is the device itself. What I mean by that is that first item, Jeff's cell phone, was a basic device. This work truck is extremely advanced. It uses an IDP 782 hybrid terminal that operates both over cellular and satellite. So with that, you're able to not only get that timestamp and address that's so important, but also the speed of the uh, vehicle, the heading, whether it was transmitting its uh, position over cellular or satellite, the status, what's going on with the particular asset. We're able to see that it was stationary, that the engine was off. We're also able to see waypoints that it was interacting with and additional information regarding events. We also have the ability to see all of that IO information in a very uh, dynamic way that allows us to make judgment calls and change rules in the system on how we're interacting with this device. Now again, all of those parameters are set by the device that you happen to be using for your solution. So with that, that's a wrap up on the live view. The next piece I'll be going through is all of the functionality associated here in the live view and how you can interact with your devices. Thank you very much, and I look forward to that next video.